Hi everyone, it's Irma here and in this video I'll explain what's a margin, what's padding and what's the difference between those two. And on top of that, I'm going to demonstrate it all in Visual Composer. So let me start off by showing you this little illustration here. In short, padding is what creates space inside the element while margin creates the space outside of the element. And another important parameter is the border, as that is what separates margin and padding. And another important fact, padding will never go outside of the border. When that's out of the way, we can go to some more specific examples. I've created two columns here. Both are the same except the background, just so you can see the difference is easier. They're simple columns with text and a button and they have no padding, no margins to the content or the columns themselves. So let's start with padding. Once again, padding is what increases the space inside the element, so inside this colored area here. So as you can see, all zeros at the moment. Let's increase the padding to 20 pixels. As you can see, that created extra space inside the element and also a gap between the content and the content container. Let me show you how it looks with border. So we don't have one right now, so let's add it. So that's how it looks with the 20 pixel padding and here's how it looks with that Without and with padding. As you can see, the changes happen inside the border, so only inside of the element. A practical example of using padding would be if you wanted to increase the size of the element without increasing the size of the actual content in it. And it works perfectly for buttons. So let me show you. As you can see, the button has some padding here by default, but let's see how it looks without it. not pretty. There's no room around the text at all, it just doesn't look good. So you can of course leave it to the default or you can choose any padding you wish to fit your layout of course. So it's all up to you. Another thing you could use padding for is if you wanted to show more or less of your background image. I have these two plot posts here and I want to show the whole CAD, so uh, what I would do in this case is just add padding to the bottom. You can see that? That looks much better, right? So time to move on to margin. Let's open up this example row here and move on to the second column. So a reminder, margin is what increases the space outside of the element. So let's get straight to it. Zero at the moment and 20 pixels is what we're going to add. You see that? It increased the space outside of the element and actually outside of the border as well. So let me add it here. As you can see, that's with 20 pixel margin and now without it. You see that? The movement happens outside of it. As you can see, the color that increased is not the color inside the content block, but the color outside of it. You most commonly would use margin to create a gap between elements. Let me show you what I mean exactly. I've got these three beautiful products here, but they're in a desperate need for some breathing room. So that's what I'm going to give them. Of course, with margins. I'm going to add 30 pixel margin to both sides here to all of my elements. Okay, as you can see that separated the columns beautifully. One thing you can do with margins and never with padding is to add it a negative value. Let me show you what I mean. I've got this simple blog post here, but the layout would be a lot more interesting and modern if we could take this content and overlap it with the image above it. 
And that's exactly what we're going to do now by adding, let's say, minus 70 pixels. And look at that. It looks really cool, doesn't it? And that's all there is to it. Hopefully there's no confusion anymore and you can use margins and padding with confidence now. So thank you all for watching and enjoy.